Hello everyone, my name is Renato Costa, this is Aussie Law, and today I want to talk to you about a case called Commonwealth and Sigmatic. This case brings us to where we stand today in relation to the immunity of the Commonwealth against the state's legislation. So, if you arrived in this video and you haven't yet watched the videos that I did about the MDEM and PEDA, engineers and the Melbourne Corporation Doctrine, I strongly encourage you to go check them first and then come back to this one here and watch it. But if you've done that already, stay tuned and let's see what happened to the Commonwealth immunities after the engineers and the Melbourne Corporation Doctrine. Let me briefly remind you of the background leading up to this case. In 1904, the High Court of Australia decided a case called the Emden and Peda. And in that case, the High Court said that the Constitution was to be interpreted according to its federal character. That is, the states and the Commonwealth, they both had a protection against the interference of each other. That was called the implied intergovernmental immunity. In 1920, however, with the decision in the engineer's case, the High Court took a step back from that approach and decided to interpret the Australian Constitution literally. And so they found that there was no need to go outside of the Constitution or to find extrinsic factors to limit the effect and the meaning of the text of the Australian Constitution. And in deciding like that, the High Court said that there was no such thing as the implied intergovernmental immunities. And then we arrive in 1947 to a new decision, a new phase of the High Court, with the decision called the Melbourne Corporation Doctrine. That doctrine has basically two limbs. The first is that the Commonwealth law cannot discriminate against the states by placing special burdens or disabilities upon them. And the second is that a law, a general law, even if it's not targeting the states, cannot prevent the states from operating, from functioning and existing as states. And now we arrive at the year of 1962 and a new case will add a new step in this whole scheme. The case is called the Sigmatic case. So let's talk about the facts of this case. Sigmatic was an insolvent company that owed money to the Commonwealth. Insolvency is when a corporation goes broke. If a company comes to this stage of insolvency, ultimately there can be the possibility of them selling everything they have, all of the properties, their assets, um, to pay for the debts to the people they owe. And that is why the legislation establishes a, an order of preference for the creditors to receive their debts. And so, in the case of Sigmatic, the company didn't have enough assets to satisfy the debts that it created. So some creditors would receive less than their full claim. Now, ordinarily, and according to common law, the Commonwealth would have priority over all of the debts of Sigmatic. So this means that the Commonwealth would receive the fullness of its claim. However, there was an act called the Companies Act of 1936 from New South Wales. And that act, particularly sections 282 and 297, stripped the Commonwealth from the right of having that priority over the debts of any company. The Commonwealth was entitled to priority only in respect of unpaid income tax. That meant that the Commonwealth was going to be an unsecured creditor. It will probably not receive all the money that it was owed from Sigmatic. So the Commonwealth did not agree with the New South Wales Act and it sought to have confirmed their common law prerogative of having the right of priority over all the debts and not only over those of the unpaid income tax. And thus the case went to the High Court. So the question that the High Court was invited to answer was whether a state, in this case New South Wales, if they could govern the relations between the Commonwealth and its own debtors. In a nutshell, and as put by Justice Dixon, the question was whether the legislative powers of the states could extend over one of the prerogatives of the Crown in right of the Commonwealth. Back in 1947, there had been a decision before, another case, where the Commonwealth sought exactly the same thing. 
They argued that they were not bound by that order established by the New South Wales Company Act. The Commonwealth argued that as a creditor, it should have priority over all the debts. But the High Court had said in that previous case that the act was valid. So the tide seemed favorable to the state of New South Wales coming to this case. But contrary to what the state of New South Wales may have imagined, in Sigmatic, the dissenting opinion of Justice Dixon back in the case of Arthur was actually upheld by the majority. That means that this time the High Court found the act to be invalid. There, in that previous case, Justice Dixon had said that this whole matter was a matter between the Commonwealth and its subjects, and not between the Commonwealth and the states. And as such, the states had no right to legislate against the interests of the Commonwealth. Look, his honor was not coming back to that pre-engineer's position related to the implied immunities. What he was saying was that the states could not detract powers that naturally belong to the Commonwealth. To have priority as a creditor was a prerogative of the Crown that the Commonwealth in the Crown's right enjoyed, so the states could not affect that. In particular, Justice Dixon, actually in Sigmatic, now Chief Justice Dixon, said that the states could not control the legal rights and duties between the Commonwealth and its people. By a majority of five against two, with Justices McTinnan and Taylor in dissent, the High Court of Australia established that it is not within the constitutional competence of a state to deprive the Crown in right of Commonwealth from its prerogative rights. And in this case, it meant that the New South Wales Company Act was invalid to the extent that it did not recognize the priority that the Commonwealth had to receive its full debts from the Sigmatic. All in all, the decision is understood to have established a strong Commonwealth immunity. That's because the states only have the immunity according to the Melbourne Corporation Doctrine, which is quite limited and little. But the Commonwealth now has not only this precedent, but also Section 109 of the Australian Constitution that we refer to in another video that you can click and watch it through here. These are the essential features of the Sigmatic case. A new step in this path trying to understand and find the right balance between the centralist and a federalist approach to interpreting the Australian Constitution. So what are your comments about that? Do you think the High Court is on the right track trying to find this balance of how to interpret the Constitution? Do you think it is a good idea to sort of diminish the effects of the engineer's case? Leave a comment below, I would like to see them, and also don't leave before liking this video and subscribing to our channel. I hope to see you soon, ciao!